congratulations on your new white 1735. The first thing to do once you remove your machine from the box is place it on a flat surface like a table. Then you're going to plug it in and turn the machine on. Before sewing, you want to make sure to use a good quality sewing thread. You also want to use good quality needles, especially the recommended brand. The first thing we're going to do is wind a bobbin. So take your thread, pull up your spool pin holder, take one of the felt pads and stick it onto the spool pin to prevent static electricity as you sew. Place the thread spool on the spool pin, wrap the thread around the bobbin tension disc and back around to the side. There are two ways to wind your bobbin. You can place the bobbin on the bobbin winder and wrap the thread around a few times or you can take the thread and stick it through one of the holes found in the bobbin. You want to make sure to leave yourself a little tail to hang on to and then place that bobbin back onto the bobbin spindle. We're then going to activate the bobbin by pushing it over to the right side. Before I press on the pedal though, I need to deactivate the needle from moving up and down and activate the bobbin winding. To do that, I'm going to pull out my hand wheel and now we're ready to go. Press on the pedal. The bobbin will stop winding when it is full. When it stops, you want to push the bobbin back over to the left side and remove the bobbin from the bobbin spindle. Then take your scissors and cut the thread. Now we need to put the bobbin into the bobbin case. To get to the bobbin case, we need to remove our accessory tray. And just so you know, if you pull down on your accessory tray, you have a nice little tray inside of here to put all of your different supplies. To remove it, we're going to pull it off to the side and set it down. Open up down here and there is my bobbin case. Going to pull it out, take my bobbin, stick it in the bobbin case so that the thread when it comes off the bobbin will be winding counterclockwise. Then we need to stick the thread through the bobbin tension. There is an opening in the bobbin case. We're going to come down to the bottom and you'll hear it click into the tension. Once it is through, you will feel that there's some tension on that thread as you pull it out. Turn the bobbin case over, hold up on the handle, and place the bobbin case back into the bottom. We're going to leave this open because we need to pull our bobbin thread up to the machine. So now we need to thread. We're going to take our thread, take it out of that bobbin tension disc, take your thread, go in from the front, underneath, and pull it back towards you until it clicks right in. Then we're going to go down to through your thread tension, back up around the side to our take up lever. You want to go in front of this metal piece back here from the right and down to the left, down the machine. There is a hook on the top of the needle. You need to go in from the right side and then thread your needle. Sometimes it is easier if you lower your presser foot to thread your needle. Once you have threaded your needle, raise your presser foot, turn your hand wheel towards you, holding onto your thread, and then pull up on that thread until you pull your bobbin thread up to the top. Then we can close up the bottom, take our threads underneath the presser foot and towards the back of the machine. We can put our accessory tray back on, and we're ready to start sewing. Before we begin sewing, we want to set our thread tension disc between three and five, if we're working on heavier or lighter fabric, we might want to adjust that either making it a lower number or a higher number. But the regular setting is between three and five, so I'm going to leave it at four. We also want to set our presser foot pressure, the amount of pressure that the presser foot is going to put on the fabric. That is found inside. There are four different settings. It starts at zero and moves down to three. 
For regular weight fabric, we should leave it set at two. If you're working on lighter fabric, you might want to move it up to one. Or if you're working on heavier fabric, you might want to move down to three. We're going to keep it set at two for our sewing today. I'm going to start with a straight stitch. Straight stitch on my machine is A, stitch A. The first thing I need to do is set my, set my stitch selector guide at A. I also want to set my stitch width dial at zero because I'm sewing a regular straight stitch. And I'm going to set my stitch length at about 2.5, which is the regular stitch length for regular weight fabric. I'm going to take my fabric, place it underneath, make sure to put my presser foot down, and start sewing. When you begin sewing, you, you want to reverse to secure your stitches at the beginning and at the end. Reverse again. Make sure you finish with your take-up lever in the upright position. Raise your presser foot, cut your threads. There's a cutter on the back side of your needle. And there you go, regular straight stitch. If you're sewing on a heavier fabric, for example, a denim, you might want to lengthen your stitch length. So I'm set at 2.5, I'm gonna move up to about three and a half, longer stitch length for that heavier fabric. Place it underneath, put that presser foot down, and so, remember to secure your edges. Make sure your take-up lever is all the way in the upright position. Raise your presser foot, cut those threads, and there you go, straight stitch on a heavier fabric. You can also sew a zipper in with your regular centered straight stitch, and there's a special foot you can use. That is your zipper foot, which comes with your machine. This is what the zipper foot looks like. It can go on the machine two ways, either on the right-hand side or on the left-hand side. To remove the presser foot I have on now, there is a lever on the back side. If I press that towards me, it will drop that presser foot down. I can remove that presser foot. I will stick my zipper foot underneath and lower my presser foot down onto the foot so that when I lift it back up, it's attached. I have my zipper foot on the right side, so if I take my zipper and my fabric, it's easiest to place your zipper on the right-hand side of that foot. Lower your presser foot and you're ready to sew. However, the last time I sewed, I had that 3.5 stitch length, so I need to lower my stitch length down to that 2.5 stitch length. And now I'm ready to sew. Make sure to secure your stitches at the bottom. Your take-up lever is in the upright position. Lift your presser foot and cut your threads. To sew the other side in, we're going to remove our presser foot by pressing that lever in the back, moving it over to the left side, lower it down, then take our zipper and line up the other side, the right-hand side of the zipper, along the zipper foot, and sew. Make sure your take-up lever is all the way up. Cut your threads, and there you go, you've sewn a zipper in. You can also darn or mend with your center straight stitch. The best foot to use is the zigzag foot that comes with your machine. So we're going to take off our zipper foot, place the zigzag foot underneath, lower that presser foot on top, Make sure to take those threads underneath the foot and towards the back. Place your project underneath and lower the presser foot. To do darning or mending, we're going to take a few stitches forward and then we're going to reverse. As I'm sewing, I will go forward a few stitches and backwards a few stitches, pulling my fabric to the side as I go to cover up the hole.
When you're finished, make sure your take up lever's in the upright position. Raise your presser foot, cut your threads, and you fixed it. Top stitching is a great technique to do decorative detail on your projects. Using your straight stitch, put your project underneath, right side facing up, lower your presser foot, and sew. Making sure to reverse at the beginning and the end. Make sure your take up lever is all the way in the upright position. Raise your presser foot and cut your threads. Nice decorative detail. You can also do basting with your machine. It is stitch A again, but it is a little bit longer, which means I need to lengthen my stitch length. It, right now it is set at 2.5. I'm going to take it all the way down to 4 for a basting stitch. Put my project underneath, lower my presser foot. When you baste, you do not want to secure those ends. You want to leave them open. Make sure you end with your take-up lever all the way in the upright position. Raise your presser foot and cut your threads. And there you have your basting stitch. The basting stitch is nice because all you have to do is pull on one of the threads and you can pull out the stitches. You can also gather with your straight stitch, making sure your length is still set at 4.0. We're going to sew. Again, make sure not to secure your edges at the beginning or the end. End with your take up lever in the upright position, raise your presser foot, and cut your threads. The best way to gather is by having two rows of these basting stitches. So take your project underneath, line up that first row stitching right along the edge of that presser foot, and sew again. And with your take-up lever up, raise your presser foot, and cut your threads. The easiest way to gather is to grab either both the needle threads or both the bobbin threads and pull. You can spread your gathers around, make them more open or more tightly close together, but there you go, you have some gathers. You have five different zigzag stitches on your machine. They are shown on the front. They go from a one millimeter all the way up to a five millimeter. The numbers correlate with the width at the very top, your stitch width dial. So with your stitch width dial set at one, you will get the first zigzag stitch. The second zigzag stitch is with your stitch width dial set at two. Let's start at one and we'll move all the way up to five. Take your fabric underneath, lower your presser foot, and begin sewing. Stopping with my needle in the upright position out of the fabric, I can switch to the two stitch width, and now we'll have the larger zigzag stitch. Stopping again with my needle out of the fabric, moving it up to three, I will have the third zigzag stitch. Stopping again with my needle out, turning the stitch width to four, I will have the fourth zigzag stitch. And last one, ending with my needle out, switching the dial to five, I will have the widest zigzag stitch. Again, make sure you end with your take up lever in the upright position. Raise your presser foot, cut your threads, and there are your different stitch widths. Starting at one millimeter, going down to two, three, four, and five. You have a couple of different stitches on your machine to do a blind hem. There's the B stitch. There's also the E stitch. We're going to use the E stitch, so I'm going to turn my stitch selector guide so that the arrow points down to E. Now, E is one of the green stitches, so on my stitch length, I want to make sure that I'm set for a stitch length within the green section. I'm going to leave it at 2.5 because that is in the green section. 
There's a special foot you can use for blind hem. It is your blind hem foot. So I'm going to remove the foot on the machine and place the blind hem foot underneath. Lower the presser foot, lift it back up, and remember to take those threads underneath the foot towards the back. To do a blind hem, you're going to take your project and fold up your hem. Then you're going to take the fabric, the extra fabric, and fold it down. So you will see a little bit of the top part of your hem. If you look from the side, it kind of looks like a backwards S. Once you have folded that, you're going to take it underneath so that the fold of your fabric is on the left hand side of this little flange on the foot. We're going to lower our presser foot so that fold is right along that flange. With this blind hem stitch, you have the width on the machine. The width on the machine determines how far over the zigzag of the blind hem stitch will go. So if I keep it set at zero, I'm just going to have a regular stitch width. If I move it, to, let's try two and a half or three. Let's do three. I start to sew, I'll do a couple regular straight stitches and then I'll do that zigzag. If I catch too much fabric, when I do that zigzag, it'll be way over inside the fabric. And actually it is a little bit too far. So I'm gonna back up my zigzag, my stitch width by moving it back down to two. It is a good idea to practice this on a little sample piece of your fabric before you get started. Secure your stitches. Make sure your take up lever is all the way in the upright position. Raise your presser foot and cut your threads. There it is from the top, but if I lift up my fabric, this is what you'll see from the front. If you see at the very beginning, you can see some of my stitches. That's where my stitch width was set at three. So I was catching a little bit too much fabric. Then I moved it down and you can't see my stitches anymore. There's a great stitch on your machine to sew elastic on. That is stitch C, which is the box stitch. I'm gonna turn my stitch to get to that C stitch. What that stitch will do is sew across and then across my elastic and sew on the other. The best foot to use is your zigzag foot. So I'm gonna take off my blind hem foot and put my zigzag foot back on. Again, don't forget to take those threads to the back of the machine under the foot. I'm gonna take my piece of elastic and my project right side facing down and put my elastic underneath the foot right in the center I want to make sure my stitch width is set as wide as I possibly want it to be to go over my elastic. My elastic is pretty wide, so I'm going to set my stitch width at five, the widest it will go, and then I'm going to sew. Make sure you end with your take up lever up raise your presser foot and cut your threads and you've sewn your elastic in. If you pull on your elastic, you can cause it together. You have a great stitch on your machine called the three step zigzag stitch. It is stitch D, so I'm going to turn my stitch selector guide to D and I'm going to leave my stitch width at five so it'll be the widest. The three-step zigzag is a great stitch to use to finish your edges, especially if they're fraying, kind of like mine are. So we're gonna take our project underneath, lower our presser foot, and begin to sew. Make sure to end with your take-up lever up, raise your presser foot, and cut your threads and that will prevent your fabric from fraying. You can also mend a tear with your three-step zigzag. If you place the tear underneath the presser foot so that it is right in the center and do your three-step zigzag, it will close it up. Remember to secure it beginning and end. 
When you get to the bottom, if you press and hold that release bu or reverse button, you can go right back over it and then come right back down again. Don't forget to end with your take-up lever up, raise your presser foot, and you've mended your tear. You can also make great buttonholes with your machine using your buttonhole foot. We're going to re remove our other foot to put our buttonhole foot on. Place it underneath, lower that presser foot. The way to determine how big you need to make your buttonhole, how long you need to make it, is by taking your actual button you're going to sew on and go through the buttonhole and placing it along the side. Measure how long that button is based on these red notches on the side of the buttonhole foot. I'm going to stop right about at that line because that'll be the perfect size buttonhole. Then we're going to place our button down, take our project and bring it underneath. I'm using a, my project, my piece of fabric. I also have a piece of stabilizer underneath here. You'll probably have interfacing because lots of times where you put buttonholes you'll have interfacing instead of stabilizer. I'm going to lower my presser foot, but first I need to choose my stitch. On this machine I have three stitches for my buttonhole. There's stitch F, G, and H. I'm going to start with H, which has a 1 underneath it. That's how I know I start there. Step 1 is going to go down on the left side. Then step 2, going to G, is going to do my bar tack at the bottom. Step 3 is stitch F. It will do the right hand side of my buttonhole. And then I go back to G for step 4, which will do the bar tack at the top. So let's turn our stitch selector to H. I also want to make sure my stitch length is set for buttonhole. The buttonholes are the yellow stitches. So if I turn my stitch length dial, I will find the yellow and line it up along there. It's right about zero. I also am going to leave my stitch width at five. That is because that'll give me a nice wide buttonhole. And now I'm ready to sew. I'm going to stop sewing the left side when the marks on the foot line up with the red line on the side. I need to stop and make sure my needle is out of the fabric. Now I'm going to switch to 2, which is G, so turn my stitch selector to G. So about four or five times across. Again, end with my needle in the upright position. Now I need to do 3, which is stitch F, so turn it to F, and so. I'm going to sew until the red lines end up at the top, and now I need to do the fourth step, which is the top part of my buttonhole. Turn it back to G, go back and forth about four times, end with your needle out and your take-up lever all the way to the top. Raise your presser foot, take your project out, and cut your threads. And there you go. You have a buttonhole. Once you have sewn your buttonhole, you're ready to sew your button on. To do that, you're going to remove your buttonhole foot and put on your button foot. This is your button foot. Place it underneath. Lower the presser foot. Now when I sew buttons on, I'm going to go back to my zigzag stitch. On my machine, remember, I have five different zigzag stitches, but they're all underneath A. So I'm going to turn my stitch selector back to A. And the different zigzags are the different widths of the zigzag. So I'm going to set my stitch width at around three. I also need to lower my feed teeth when I sew a button on so that my stitches will not move. My fabric will not move when I sew my button on. To get to my feed teeth, I need to open up my accessory tray, move it out of the way, open up to see my bobbin case. Your feed teeth, the lever is right here. There's also a diagram that shows if your feed teeth are up. If the lever is up, your feed teeth are up. If the lever is down, your feed teeth are down. My feed teeth are right here. When I press down on the lever, you will see them drop down. Then I'm just going to close this back up put my accessory tray back on, 
take my project underneath. Again, I have fabric and a piece of stabilizer. You'll probably have that interfacing instead of stabilizer, but that'll keep the fabric from bunching up underneath the button. Then I line my button up underneath the foot and put the foot down. Before I start sewing, before I press on the pedal, I'm going to turn my hand wheel towards me so that the needle will go into the buttonhole on one side and then come out and swing to the other side and go down. If you do not have the right stitch width, it will not go through that se second hole. You want to make sure you're set for the right stitch width before you press on the pedal. Once you're sure, you can press on the pedal. Let it do a few stitches back and forth. Go back and forth about four or five times. Then don't forget to turn your hand wheel so that your take up lever is all the way to the top. Raise your presser foot, pull your button out, and cut your threads. And you've sewn your button on. You can also do stippling and freehand embroidery with your machine. The first thing you're going to want to do is hoop your fabric and some stabilizer. When we do free motion or stippling, we need to remove the presser foot and the ankle. It's easiest to remove the presser foot first. And then undo the screw to release the ankle. Remember my feed teeth were down, so I keep those feed teeth down. Place my hoop underneath. I need to make sure that I lower my presser foot. If I don't lower my presser foot, I don't have my thread tension. We're going to go back to our A stitches, our straight stitches in zigzag. I'm going to start with a straight stitch. And to do a straight stitch, remember, we need to be set at zero stitch width. When I do free motion, because I have those feed teeth dropped, I need to move the hoop around with my hands. So the first thing I'm going to do is hold on to the thread and turn the hand wheel towards me to draw the bobbin thread up to the top. Then I'm going to take a few stitches, stop, and cut those threads. Traditional stippling, you try not to cross over your edges. Remember, we can also use our zigzag stitches as well. The way to get to the zigzag stitches is by changing my stitch width. I'm going to go to three for the third stitch width, the third zigzag, and so. You can make letters or different interesting designs. When you're all finished, you want to stop with your needle in the upright position. Make sure that take up levers up to the top. Raise your presser foot, pull your project out, and clip those threads. And you've done your own stippling and freehand embroidery. You also have some great stretch stitches on your machine. The first one we're going to use is I. That's your straight overlock stitch. These stitches are great to use on knit fabrics. To get to stitch I, I'm going to turn my stitch selector guide over to I. When I use my stretch stitches, especially this one, I'm going to set my stitch width at five. That way it will do the widest stitch as I sew. I also need to set my stitch length to be in the red area or the stretch stitch area. So if I turn it, that is set at four. And then I'm ready to go. Put your project underneath, lower your presser foot, and sew.
Make sure your take up lever is up, raise your presser foot and cut your threads. You have a great seam overcast stitch on your machine. That is stitch K. So I'll turn my stitch selector to K, take my project right sides together underneath the machine, lower the presser foot, and sew. When you're finished, make sure to end with your take-up lever up, raise your presser foot, and cut your threads. And there you go. You've sewn your seam and overcasted to the edge. Once you've done that, you can take your scissors and cut off your extra fabric all the way up to that stitching line. You also have a reinforced zigzag stitches and reinforced straight stitch on your machine. This is a great way to sew your seams in knits. Let's start with the first one. There are actually five different L stitches. If we start with the first L, move our selector dial over to L, that's actually set at one millimeter stitch width. And then begin sewing. This will end up looking like a lightning stitch, which is a great way to sew a seam on knit fabrics. When you stretch that knit fabric, that stitch will hold the fabric together. If we want to get the wider L stitches, we just move our stitch width up. So if I move up to two and sew my stitch, it will be a little bit wider. If I stop, again, make sure my needle's out of the fabric, move up to three, it'll even be wider. Stop with the needle up, move to four. And stop with the needle up and move to five, our widest. If you move your stitch di width dial all the way down to zero, Remember, at zero for stitch width, we will have a straight stitch. So with the L stitch, we will have a straight reinforced stitch. Make sure to end with your take up lever all the way up, raise your presser foot, and cut your threads. So from the top, we started with the one millimeter, moved up to two, to three, to four, to five, and down to our zero stitch width, which gives us that reinforced straight stitch. Again, these are great stitches for knits because they don't pop when you stretch your fabric. The last stitch on your machine is the double overlock stitch. That is the M stitch. This is the industry's way of finishing hems on knit garments. So if I turn my stitch selector dial to M, I have that stitch chosen. I also want to make sure I set my stitch width to five, so it'll do that wide stitch as I sew. And remember, my stitch length is still set in that red area under four. We're then gonna take our fabric, fold down our hem, sew from the right side, put the foot down, and so,
Make sure to end with your take-up lever all the way in the upright position. Raise your presser foot and cut your threads. And you've done your hem. These are just a few of the great things you can do with your new white 1735. If you'd like some new project ideas, don't forget to visit our website. Happy sewing!